want to bring in now uh, one, uh, one of our guests who really, I think, uh, has a great pulse on this market, uh, uh, almost better than, than, than anyone else out there. I'm talking about Raymond James, Chief Investment Strategist, Jeff Saad. Jeff, last time I saw you in studio, you admitted that you might have been a little bit too bullish uh, as we came into December. You've made some reassessments. What are you making of this market, particularly against the backdrop of an amazingly strong U.S. economy that doesn't show signs of inflation? Yeah, we, we actually raised some cash at the beginning of October. Our uh, proprietary short-term trading model flashed a sell signal on October 2nd. Uh, right now, Charles, I'm trying to figure out if the Dow Theory sell signal that was confirmed last week is a good signal or a false signal. We actually raised a little bit more cash uh, at the end of last week on the theory that the, the Dow theory sell signal was for real. I mean, the old saying is if Santa fails to call, the bears will roam on Broad and Wall. Uh, Jeff, does Dow theory, the, was this, does this revolve around the, the uh, transport, uh, transportation index? I know one of the key in this, yeah, well, the, it, yeah. The transportation index broke down about six or seven weeks ago. The Dow uh, Jones Industrial Average confirmed that last Wednesday with a break below its March 23rd closing low. So you, you are on a Dow Theory sell signal. I, I, there have been, it's not always right, and there have been false signals. The flash crash of 2010 and the flash crash two of 2015 were both false Dow Theory sell signals. And I'm trying to scratch my head and figure out if last week was a real signal or not. Well, we know that FedEx has some serious issues. Uh, UPS has issues. On the other hand, it was about a month or so ago that Delta hit an all-time high on, on relatively strong numbers, in part because of a relatively strong U.S. economy. So this is the thing I think people are grappling with. Uh, Wilshire 5,000, we're down almost $7 trillion. How did you guys see this on October 2nd when I think that selling began on October 3rd after those Jay Powell comments? Does this mean that maybe there's something beyond the headlines? Well, you know, it, it, it's not like I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of comparisons to 2008, and this is not 2008. Valuations are substantially less now than they were back then. You've got interest rates down about 50 basis points from where they were a few months ago. You've got uh, crude oil prices down from, I don't know, $76 a barrel to $46 a barrel. You've got an agreement with Italy and uh, Brussels. There's a lot of fundamentally strong things going on. Um, so uh, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm inclined to think that last week's Dow Theory sell signal is a false one. But because of the discipline I've had in 48 years in this business, it forced me to raise some more cash last week. Jeff, Jonas Ferris here. I'd love to ask, get your insight. You know, I, I watch mutual fund and flows, which recently turned very negative, which because investors are nervous about the market, although that's usually a buy sign, coincidentally. However, now that ETFs are in play more than open-end mutual funds and it's a lot of hedge funds, you don't really know what the individual investor is doing when you look at the fund flows, but you have such a tap on your customer base, high net worth. What are they doing? Are they panicking and wanting to get out of stocks, or are they basically sitting in it and think it's possibly a buying opportunity? Uh, I speak all over the country. Actually, I speak all over the world. And I can tell you that the individual investor is not cautious. They are scared to death, which is not what you see at major market tops. Although the, 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 I follow the American Association for Individual Investors for that data, and it's, it's been swinging pretty quickly, to your point. By the same token, though, Jeff, you know, it's... The pros missed most of this rally. They were anxious and, and, and afraid. You know, the, the, the Bank of America uh, survey with, uh, I don't know, like 800 ma money managers, almost a trillion dollars. And they've been overly cautious all year long. So, uh, you know, it's hard to say who's right with respect to sentiment and who's the contrarian indicator anymore. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I can tell you that I am out in the system speaking to three or 400 investors um, every, every, in every city I go to, and they are scared to death. Je Jeff, real quick, Mitch Rochelle, one of the things uh, I'm looking at is there's 14 of the biggest stock analysts um, with, with all the big financial institutions, and every one of them is predicting that in 2019 the market's up. So is there something that they know that we don't know? Yeah, I think they know that earnings are going to continue to come in better than most people expect. 
and uh, that people are underinvested, and the pension funds, endowment funds, sovereign wealth funds, the only way they can catch up with their targeted returns is to own stocks. You cannot mathematically catch up in fixed income. So I think you're going to see a big switch right. out of fixed income and into equities. It never hurts, too, when expectations are low. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Saab, thank you very much. Appreciate it.